I get no sound on the chat. Try that one. Sorry. There we go. Have you got sound now? Sound for everyone? I'll try now. As I say, we've got a message popping up on my screen saying uh, working now. I think, I think we've cured the lag. We've got the lag down to under 10 seconds between what you're getting and us. But I've got a thing keeps popping up on my screen here saying that a stream's current bit rate is lower than recommended. So, um, yeah. Hopefully we are all good now. Sound? Yes? That's it. Everyone's yeah, saying yes, we have sound. That's all right. I'm not sure what that's about, that little message that's popped up. Hopefully it's not going to be just our one gremlin for today. Uh, but trust me, I've had one of them days today, which it wouldn't surprise me. If anything could go wrong, it would go wrong. Loud and clear. Everyone <laughs> seems good now. Sorted. Thank goodness. That's all right. And that message hasn't popped back up. I'm just hoping that was the one and only thing with that. As I say, haven't seen that before. Anyway, good afternoon, guys. How are we all doing? Afternoon. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Very good. And Nathan, yep. you all right? Yep, doing well. Is your balloon lamp still on? Balloon lamp is still on the wall. <laughs> no loud bang yet, then. Yeah, that's it. So you get a bang yet. in the night. <laughs> Nothing yet. That's it. Everyone doing their DIY jobs. Anyway, good afternoon to everybody who's in the actual chat rooms. Obviously, the people in the Flory chat. Lovely. Crikey, Paul, I'm not reading that out. I, yeah, that's a long old question. <laughs> I'll leave that to a responsible I'll, adult to read that out. Uh, but I've just clicked onto later. it. Yes, we'll save that to later. That. Uh, and various things. And good afternoon to obviously everybody in uh, YouTube land as well. And that's flashing up like a good one. So um, very good. Well done to everybody. As I say, I've had a nightmare day today because anything could have gone wrong has gone wrong. I was trying to do the stand for my uh, MiG-23 and I made it this way. So it was going to be like that originally and that didn't work out very well. So now we've gone for this version. So what I need to do now is bend the acrylic which I will do separately to doing it on a live show because I need multiple cameras because it's one of those where you can only get one shot at doing it. But uh, needless to say, we'll get the pin done, joint, and then we'll basically um, five minute epoxy resin it into place and come around and do it. So that's something which we'll probably do over the weekend on there. And then later on today, I'm going to be attempting, I say attempting loosely, to um, put raised detail back into this lovely little Trojan T20H. So, yes. And luckily for us, the decals have arrived. Matt's got them. They have, yep. They are here. That's the ones. Hold on. You can go full screen. Hold on. There we go. Hold them up again. Yeah. There we go. That's the Yay. ones. There you go. That massive decal sheet there, look. That's, <laughs> that's what we cute. like to see. A decal sheet that's, that's tiny. So that's that's my uh, perfect decal sheet, that. Yeah, that sounds good <laughs> and to me. And then also... There you go. Oh, my pilot. Hey. His there he pilot's is. arrived. My pilot's arrived. And he is, um, he's definitely a lot better than the other one. Put yeah, it that well, way. That's not hard, is it? <laughs> no. And he's already in a seat, so that's good for you, isn't it? Hmm. That's the whole point. I just wanted to pull yeah. him in. I might have to take him off at the knees, as always. Yeah. But no, he's nice, actually. These hero bonus figures are really nicely detailed. Yes. So that'll give him hours of fun painting. Yeah, very Ooh. nice. <laughs> to be honest, it won't. I'll just do my usual way. Block colour, wash, dry brush, a little bit of detail, job done. It'll be absolutely fine, isn't it? I bet you're not going to see most of him anyway, are Not you? really. Not in this cockpit. He literally just will plonk in there and you won't see any of the detail. But I know he's in there. That's the main thing. And he fits, unlike the other one, who clearly is seven foot two. Yeah. You do actually realise this one's got his visor up though and you could have a face to paint yeah but that t it's a tiny little face isn't it uh, no not really it's isn't quite it? a nice 
detailed face. I might just putty it then and I put his visor down. <laughs> <laughs> you popper. Uh, right, okay, so what we're going to do, uh, the sort of format for is very much a general one, but I will say you do want to hang around to the end of the show, uh, just before five o'clock, because we will be having the uh, Flory Models Easter Egg Hunt, um, where you can get 50% off anything. Any order you put through, you can get 50% off. Um, it's limited, just to 10 eggs you need to find. So they are hidden strategically around the Flory Model site somewhere, but it doesn't all go live until near the end of the show when I will set it up and put it live and all the rest of it. And I'll tell you exactly how to go about all of that one. So we've got that one coming up for the weekend. Five eggs to find between now and Sunday. And then on Sunday, I'll put up another five eggs and then you can go off and find those. And then once you found them, you'll get a promo code and then you can just click that and then that will get you 50% off your entire order. So if you order one bottle of wash, or 100 bottles of wash you'll still get 50 percent off of it okay that's how that's going to work uh and at the end of the show as always we've got the gallery of your great work and we've got some fantastic ones as well from the models that have been finished by the members uh so we've got that one up at the end of the show we're also going to be having a look around the actual pm store because for once it's out of restock is that's what andy's doing right now yeah kind of <laughs> <laughs> so is he on a timer now he's literally got like an hour and a half to get it all done <laughs> pretty yeah pretty much so uh just so we've got sorry, oh, mate, sorry. Just on your easter egg hunt i take it it's one egg per person yes it is it's one egg per person the code will only yeah. work once for you um and that's it so it's five today five on sunday uh that will go through with it and the plan is like me and matt were saying we might pop on over the weekend so watch this space like yeah. and subscribe ring the bell <laughs> and get notified when we are live so that's the plan for that one so we'll be popping on and off uh, over the weekend as well i think with that one so we can keep up with everything that's going on in there so it should be quite a bit of fun really that's it put a bit of fun in and you don't have to go out so everyone's self-isolating still and it's all good yep. so i think it's a good thing think of all the the, the pain you're saving by not being stuck in traffic because right oh. now I've got a road called the A38, which is literally over my shoulder. It's just behind us. And it's normally stationary about this time of the year with people just stuck trying to go into Cornwall and things like that. So, yes, yeah, so you're saving yourselves a lot of heartache uh, by just doing that. So that's fantastic. But well done to everybody who's self-isolating and everybody's been joining us over the last, well, what we, how long have we been doing this now? It feels like a year. Three weeks. Are we into week three? Down. Yeah, I think we're on three weeks. Three yeah three weeks amazing yeah. yeah that's it yeah the end of the school holidays for Easter will be four weeks so yeah 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 we're three weeks we've been doing this so it's not bad is it really? no that's it all good <laughs> uh, finished some bottles. Hey. <laughs> so, so what we're going to do as well so feel free to post up i know the guys are going to be doing some bits there matt's got some stuff to show you as well that we've added from the pm store up with you today and i can show a quick little clippy clippy of it uh obviously you've got the review for these uh we spoke about it yesterday the review is up as well so if you want to go off and see that i'll presume a lot of you already have uh you can literally just go along and watch the review and we talk about the problems that these cutters do have it's not all just glowing um it is a good review though i think because it's totally impartial they are very good i think they're the best on the market but you do have to be careful with them uh, certainly a lot cheaper than we were saying about using the guns once uh, so that is up on the actual site right now obviously this is the forum you're looking in but it's also out on all the usual social media platforms as well so you can go off and see that as i was going through uh, apologies today there isn't actually a, a part of this up because i've run out of footage <laughs> i've literally run out to do it so over the weekend i will be working so we'll get the next part of the mig up with you when that will be up because there'll be enough then for the next part as it goes up and there we go cool we all good yeah very good yes um, look oh, i have a deckled book in here look hold on hey. we need a good camera for that hold on let me put me over it on oh god that's where it all crashes no <laughs> it says, there we go how shiny that is look at that I'm a so yeah, and tons of stencils underneath. Nope. Yeah, you lying git. <laughs> yeah, it looks, it looks. That's the best scheme for a navy buccaneer. It right is. Now. Yeah, I have that's to say, I do book. like the blue and white. That's the real proper classic colours in that one. It is, isn't yeah. it? But, uh, so yeah, that's coming along, and the undercarriage is all sort of ready for a wash and detail up. Very so it's good. definitely getting there. I am definitely getting there with it. Plodding on. Yes. Uh, and if anybody is wondering why there's no stencil decals underneath because 
they're in white on the deco sheet that I've got, which I'm using obviously off the uh, Airfix kit. But they ain't going to show up. But there's absolutely no point in wasting my time putting them on. So, to be honest, there well. isn't that many underneath anyway. Never going to see them in that scale. I don't know. Well, I've got that one on anyway, so that'll have to do. But um, yeah. who's going to see underneath anyway? Well, exactly. Yeah. So when it's stuck in the cabinet, that's going to be what you see. So mm. yeah, be fine. Be fine. Be done. It looks nice with that yellow stripe on the wings because it makes mine. I think if it didn't have the yellow stripes on the wing, it wouldn't look yeah. as good. But with that, it, why don't why do they stop doing that? I think they should bring that back on all aircraft. Yeah. I've got to I've got to say what does worry me a little bit. Hmm. Because obviously I've used the stencils off a full extra dark sea grey one. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I've got no idea whether it had these on this scheme or not. <laughs> Most of these stencils, I've got no clue. I've just had to use the Airfix sort of stencil data to sort of fill in the gap. So if it is wrong. My apologies to the Buccaneer aficionados and everything. It's, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm sure they'll shout up and go, no, it shouldn't have had them, it should be this, that and the other, but I don't know. You're that bothered. <laughs> no, I just want the thing done. But it's give it a bit of colour, <laughs> isn't it? Mm, no, it is. Yeah, that's cool. Um, it yeah, does. I'm, 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 as soon as you get the decals on any model, I think it makes it. It's a real turning point because, especially for aircraft modelling, you might have done a lot of sanding and filling, rescribing, re riveting, and none of it looks any good. It's like you're not getting anywhere. But as soon as you put the decals on, it's like, I don't know, the light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to modelling. You know, armour, because I tend to put my decals on really late when it comes to armour, I don't really get that feeling. But with aircraft, it's like, yeah, okay, home stretch now. I know we're almost done. We can get on with it now and push through. So yeah. that was the thing with this. It's a bit of a turning point. But I was working on my buccaneer. It was like a real, that's it. It's a real mojo builder as well. You think, right, decals on, let's get the wash on, let's get all the bits on, let's push through with it. You know, yet yeah. before you're very much case, eh, well, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, or it sits in a box in the office for yeah. months on end. <laughs> Six months it sat there in primer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, quick right. question here from Graham. He says, anybody know where we get 132nd Thunderbird uh, display decals? Ooh. Tamiya, obviously, because I did the kit. <laughs> I built two of them, yeah. the Thunderbirds uh, F-16 in 32nd. One in flight, one on the ground, weirdly. Um, but apart from that, I don't know if anybody does uh, normal aftermarket ones in 32nd. Uh, Hannance are your friends? Yeah, I'd say that. Get Tannance and have a Google for him, but don't know off the top of my head. Yes. It would be somebody like Microscale, is it? Not Micro... You know, mm. I don't know what old now, but yeah. Go on, Nath, get me out of this one. Yeah, Nath, quick, look. <laughs> okay, whilst you're looking, uh, Timmy says, good afternoon, lovely in the shows. Uh, what would you recommend for clamps, uh, for gluing wings, etc.? A couple of options. Um, pegs are still the best ever tool ever invented, but I'll tell you what I like for doing wings, and we've, I've spoken about these quite a lot for members. They've seen me do this, so apologies to them for recapping, but... These are paper hanging clips, okay? So these things here. So the thing is, they've got a really flat edge for the pinch point. Mm. Uh, they're really strong. And the great thing is, you can just come along and just go to the inside and go right to the very edge. And um, because they're really strong, they grip even on curvy surfaces, even though there's no rubber side and stuff like that, but they've got very good bite to them. And they're fantastic just for getting on. So if you've got like a, a trailing edge and you really want to pin it down, you can hang it literally right on the very, very edge of it. And it's just enough to pull it together and stop them going. So you can buy these on Amazon. We did have the link for it um, on the site somewhere. I'll put it up at the time. But you buy me like, I think it's like bags of 12. And um, But they're really, really cheap. It's just a couple of quid. But they were off of Amazon. So if you've got Amazon Prime, it's just a quick quick thing to get so they're really really nice because again the pinch point is just very very fine uh, but they are flat so that's the nice thing the, the bite on them is flat so it's not like it's an edge that's biting in but they are beautiful and to be honest it's how I did the wings on this so you know you can just stick them around like this and if you wanted to you can pop one on the end and go around and you can put them and to be honest it's how we did the wings on this uh, around on here and they just got a really, really good bite. But they even work on rounded off areas and stuff. So that's how I do it. 
quite like these. Been using them for a while now, and I must admit, I won't go back to using anything else. The trouble is, if you're using pegs, the bite on it really isn't that strong. You know, they do bite, but it's not as strong as these. These have proper got a good bite on it. So, you know, and they tend to fall yep. off and you knock them off as well when they're big and they're in the way and it's all that type of thing. So these are quite small, they're nice. And as I say, you can just hook them on the edge. And even on a really slippy surface like that, they still bite. So yes. Get I think people use um, ladies' hair clips as well, the metal ones. Yeah. They, they've like got a decent sort of spring on them to yeah. the clamp in and I bet they're cheap as cheap as anything. It is, you know, and that's the thing as well, like, you know, you've got your rubber bands of this world, you've got all your different bits and pieces and, you know, some of the easiest ones are good. Another option as well is these little things, which I've done in the past, but I find these are a little bit too strong, is uh, crocodile clips. You can buy these, I've got them on bamboo sticks. And that's what I use and just these because these again you buy a million of them for a quid they're dirt cheap but the trouble is the bite is very strong so sometimes if you put it onto a glued area if it's softened the plastic this will proper cut into it so you do have mm -hmm. to be careful with these they're great for just general holding and clamps and and stuff like that and this is, tends to be how I tend to use it you know because the bite is really really strong on these but as I said, be careful. If you're going on a leading edge of wing and you've glued this and it's a little bit soft, if you put that in, I imagine it will chew through it, you know? Yeah. But, um, but they are pretty good. You can just sort of, yeah, they've got a really good bite on them. But a bag of bamboo skewers from your local supermarket or wherever, and then you say, go on eBay or somewhere and you can buy like a bag of 12 again, crocodile clips, and you just push them in the end, screw them in and it's job done. Simple, very, very cheap. And for a couple of quid, you can make up hundreds of them. So dead, dead handy. Cheaper than forking out for a load of these. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So yes, that's those. Uh, what what are you going to show, Nathan? You dug something out. What you got? I've got something that Phil hates. Go on. <laughs> show us your wares. These things oh, here. God, I do I hate those things. If they, <laughs> they just... If the bar, not being funny, this bit, hold on, hold on, I can't do it on here because I've got it set up. Hold on, if I just take you back to here a minute, I can use my new toy. <laughs> so, where is it? So, if I'm, if you're using this bit here, ah, see, how clever is this? If this pin, it's carbon fibre, I think, isn't it? Um, something like that, yeah. Or something like that. If it was square, these wouldn't walk around. You know, yeah. because these have a nasty habit of one goes that way and one goes that way when you're trying yep. to clamp. You they know? just sting off in random places, don't they? It does. And that's the problem with it, I must admit. I think they're very, very good because they're, they're good friction clamps and they come in different sizes. Right. You can get one or two. But if you if you over tighten it, it does just fly off somewhere. Yeah, it does that. Yeah. <laughs> they, they can't put any force on them at all. No. That's the problem with them. But I'm quite a fan of these sort of bench vice yeah. things. Al Aldi, once every six months, sell these and it's got a suction base on it, mm -hmm. which you don't need the suction base, to be honest. But yeah, I think I'm going to have to get some of those picture clamps. That you I've just seen loads of those picture clamps on Amazon for about or oh, eight quid for 30 and i'm sure there's about oh yeah there you there. go yeah i was going to say i know i just paid i think i paid something like 3.99 for whatever it was for 20 or something but you can buy them in bulk and it works out even cheaper if you've got a load of you together just buy a load of them and then just divvy them out to your mates and that's the best way of doing it keeps it cheap well i just typed in what did i type in and get loads and loads of links yeah um picture hanging clip that's all i typed in i've got loads of different versions of them mm. They are out there. Yeah. They are cheap, aren't they? Yeah, they are cheap. Uh, Neville spent the day cataloguing 120 kits. You sound like Andy. Cataloguing yeah. and having spreadsheets and stuff. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> in fact, I'll tell you what happens. A certain somebody, Ib, messages me and says, your B17 you got there, can I have it? <laughs> and I'm like, have I even got a B17? But he knows what's in my stash more than I do. 
He's like, yes, you have. It's on the left. <laughs> and I was like, have I? Oh, yeah. It's my, it's my uh, photographic memory of yours. It is. Statue. He's got this this thing where he can <laughs> f remember kits and their locations and everything. But I haven't even got a clue what I've got. <laughs> uh, how many likes did we get last night? I don't know, to be honest. I can't see from this screen. I'm on the wrong screen. Uh, so somebody's uh, starting on his 32nd Hobby Boss P61 today. Uh, anything I should look out for now yeah. yes you need like 15 foot pilots to fly yeah, it you do you know my <laughs> pilot who's like lurch this guy here unfortunately he's the wrong scale for you but you need him because if I remember rightly the rudder pedals are like 11 feet away from where the pilot seat is and we've worked out you'd have to be on stilts to reach it I don't know why um, but there is ways around it if you can be bothered. It's only one of those things when you put it together, you suddenly realise that how long would somebody's legs have to be to reach them? And But yeah. again, you can move the seat forward on it and all the rest of it if you wanted to. I always say, perhaps it's like, a, like um, you know, nice cars, flash cars. You know that bit when you turn the ignition off and the seat goes all the way back and yeah. the steering wheel goes up? Perhaps it's that. It could be that. Perhaps they were years ahead thinking on the P61 so the seat slides back when the pilot gets in and out. Mm. It's not bad kill otherwise, I don't think. When it's built up, it looks the, looks the part. It does yes. look nice. Because they're bringing out an A26, aren't they, in 30 seconds soon, or if it's not released. Mm -hmm. so, that would be something nice. like that popped up on Facebook this morning, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that'll be a big kit as well, isn't it, in 30 seconds? Yeah. Uh, Stephen says, I may not speak for all, uh, but your shows have been the highlight of my day. I'm 72 yeah. and I've been, uh, haven't been out for weeks. I went to the doctors twice. Uh, thank you for your time, guys. Absolutely. Stay safe. That's what we're here for. To yeah. entertain well, people. It, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, hopefully. Absolutely. Or drive them mad. I think after six weeks, everyone's going to be paying for us not to do this. Yes. <laughs> say, yeah, sick to death of seeing us. That's it. Yeah. Good God, no more, please. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, Stephen, stay safe. Keep tucked away. That's the main thing. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Watching here from New Jersey in the USA. Uh, working in a hospital. Thank you for what you're doing on the daily shows. No problem, John. Thank you for everything you're doing as yeah, well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely in these trying times. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. The guys are talking down here. Have you got any questions in our one as well? Yeah, I'm all ready. Here you are. Oh. David Pierce says Patricia Ann says hello. Hello, hello. indeed. Paul Selwood, who I think might have gone to work, has posted that really long question. Yeah. Um, it's asking us and the team what our opinion on AFV weathering. Because looking at wartime photos, most of the weathering seems to be um, loads of dust or covered in mud marks all over. But when you see weathering on scale models, it's nothing like the real thing. Um, the chipping is overdone. And you look on modern stuff, it is just dirt and that's it, no chipping to be seen. Hello. Yes. Do you want to say hello? I, well, this is controversial, what I think. It exactly. is. I was going to say. It... I, and I think it's a matter of opinion of what. You see, I like the chipping and I like that style of AFBs. Hmm. So you could, you could say that sort of originated from MIG, from when he sort of came on the scene and and that sort of style of it yeah um which appeals to me because that sort of enlightened my imagination for armor yeah from obviously the old verlinda and stuff that i used to see with the dioramas back in the 80s and 90s and then obviously mick came along with his sort of the pigments and then that's moved on or whatever and i just i just like the style of it it just appeals to my personal taste in armour, it's not realistic by any stretch of the imagination, I know this, yeah. but if you look at it, it stands out. And, yeah. you know, so I like I like that style. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, I'm, you know, we've had this discussion on and off air before, haven't we? And I like it as well. I think it, it just makes it pop, the details pop out and it shows everything. Is it realistic? No, not at all. Uh, but that goes the same for aircraft weathering as well. You know, a lot of people over weather aircraft i think like people under weather aircraft as well getting the balance quite right um you know like i always say it's got that thing of used but not abused but i think people like the abused look 
Um, and certainly it shows with armor, aircraft, sci-fi, no matter what it is, if you've got a heavily weathered model, it will always get more attention, I think, than somebody who's just done something realistic. Purely because yeah. it's it, we're all human. We like looking at things that are over the top. You know, so your eyes drawn to something a little bit different and a little bit blingy. It's the magpie effect, I always call it. So, yeah. you know, like the guys are saying, it's artistic license. It is. But again, it's one of those things where because of the scale effect, I think sometimes heavy weathering shows more things off on the tank, especially armor, because armor's always just a foot long, as I call it. You know, unless you're into the 16th scale stuff, but they're all roughly the same size, aren't they? You know, and that's yeah. it. So you've got a, a lot of things going on that you want to show off. So by perhaps exaggerating the weathering, certainly exaggerating things like, you know, lightening of coats and various things to it. It's a good way of highlighting different areas of the armor um, and to show off certain areas of it, to draw attention to detail and things like that, where if you just did it literally olive drab and left it and just put a dust coat over it you wouldn't see all those details but again it's one of those things when we've like we've done we've traveled around europe and that to different model shows and we've seen there seems to be more styles in different parts of the world um weathering definitely in europe seems to be a lot more heavy perhaps than they do in the us um mm -hmm. and again like dioramas and things like that seem to be more in europe perhaps than they do in the us so i think it tends to be regional as well for different types of weathering um, you know, don't get me wrong, I like to go over the top every now and again, and I usually do, and other things I'll keep quite muted uh, and quite, you know, normal. But again, I think it's literally, beauty is not eye of the beholder with these things. And again, if you enjoy it, then do it your way. That's the whole point to it. I think my biggest thing is, is to tell people, if you want to do it weathered and you like to go over the top with it and exaggerate it, then fair enough, you know? Sometimes we I, call it, I call I it like pantomime. Uh, makeup. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I treat my armour as a piece of art rather mm. than like a realism. It's not realism as such, it, it is a piece of art. So, yeah, mm. you, you want to exaggerate it. You want to exaggerate the shapes of it, the shadows, the highlights. I mean, the modulation technique is it's controversial because yeah. it's not realistic, but it works because it makes certain items pop. Mm. And then when you actually weather over the top, it does blend it all in so it's not a start. Hmm. Um, and again it's a style that works for me I like it especially if you're doing plain colours obviously like if you are doing olive drab or sort of German yellow um, Russian tanks are just are brilliant for, for doing the modulation on hmm. um, and like I say it's just a style I like so yeah I think you know at the end of the day like I was saying it's sometimes it's good to have uh, you know, you're weathering in certain ways because it does draw the eye, it grabs people's attention. If you're looking at a model show and you're looking down a, low, a load of armor, say, and you've got mm. one that's really done with the weather in, and even if it is completely over the top and all the rest of it, it's be the first one you'll look at, you know, and that, that is that to it. It is a good way of, you know, grabbing people's attention, showing off all the details on it as well. But I don't think there's anything wrong with it. At the end of the day, I like that style. I don't do it personally, but that's my personal choice to it. And like we're saying, if that's what you're into, that's what you do, then, you know, you know, you just answer to yourself. You know, you've done it the particular way you've done it. But, you know, for instance, this one here, we kept it what I would call used but not abused, you know, and that's it. And that's what we decided to do on that particular build other ones and to be honest we've got this one coming up a little bit later we've got here we got the f-35 and again i think that's very much used but we've gone through and we've done weathering we've used oils we've used all the techniques that has been you would have on a heavily weathered model but we haven't gone over the top this thing we have gone slightly over the top we've deepened out the tones we've gone right the way through it's a slightly larger scale i think it can take it better but i want this one to be a real sort of you look at it you're going to see it you know not just because it's in the markings but also that's the thing because it's got very blingy with the tiger markings i wanted to them to be part of it i didn't want it just to be gray with tiger stripes i wanted to have weathering so it's got lots going on right the way over it and again it's one of those things it's what's right for you what do you like seeing and things like that so yeah. i mean as well with, with the weathering and stuff it, it can take um stop it looking a bit die cast yes you know yeah. if, you, if they really clean they can look a bit toyish yeah uh, and it does take that element away when you do, do of, of weathering on them. So, 
again, like I say, it's always personal choice and personal taste, isn't it? What you like and what you don't. So, but it is like, yeah, people often say about it, and it's a question that does pop up all the time. And people say, like, yeah. what do you think about it? I think it's completely over the top, but it works and it looks really, really good. Is it realistic? No, not at all. But I do like it, you know. And to be honest with you, I, I bit back when I did the uh, book missile system uh, with that SA 11. It was one of those things I was really desperate to do the real bleaching technique and lighten up the panels and do all the things to it. But at the end of the day, I couldn't do it because it's not my style. I like it though, I do like it. And it's, it is that thing, we've all do it. You go through social media and you're flicking along and it'll grab your attention straight away. Something that's really heavered well. But yeah, again, I don't think it's realistic, but it looks nice. You ought to try it on the URL truck. Yeah. Yeah, if you I have a building, you want to try it and heavily weather it and just try that style and just to, yeah. just to satisfy your own curiosity to see what if you did like doing it, do you know what I mean? Or it's like, oh, God, no, this really isn't for me. I like other people's, but it's not. Yeah. It's I not think in some ways do. as well, if you've got certain colours, like with armour and like that Ural truck will be a classic, because they're one colour, you know, yeah. it, you need something to make it they yeah. say not look like die cast so why not that's perfect if you've got like a camoed aircraft you could do other things with it and you've got lots of things going on it's different but if it is a block of olive drab or whatever it is you know you do need something to make it look a little bit special and to bring it all to life i think with that though as well there's a lot of pictures of sort of derelict ones ones that's been left out to weather properly and that so you could take a lot of inspiration to actually hmm to do one and and it would kind of be realistic because you'd have proper reference of it instead of just sort of guessing how it would weather so yeah. you yeah. know um and i think that's the, the the joy of actually doing russian stuff or soviet stuff yeah because they have so much of it and it's left all over in de various um, states of decay yes um so the, and and people there's tons of pictures out there on on all social media pinterest wherever for you to take inspiration from so I mean, I know I don't know if Jamie's on, but he he, um, he did a Wessex, mm -hmm. um, not that long ago. I think it was a seventy-second one, which properly heavily weathered, but it is an abandoned one. Like he's, I think he put because everybody, oh, that's not realistic. And then he actually put a picture up of the real one. Yeah, it's pretty much spot on to how it how it has weathered properly. But yeah, uh... Nathan, what do you think? I think the best answer to this is yesterday we had that Berg Panzer on, the other one with the digger on the front. Hmm. Yeah. The weathering made that model. Yeah. Absolutely made it. But it's up to you how you weather it. If you don't weather it, it looks weird, especially with armour. Mm. So I'd rather see something erring on the heavy side than being underweathered, I think. Hmm. But it's, you build to your own criteria and if anybody yeah. don't like it they can take yeah, yeah. a long walk off a short pier can't they? <laughs> yeah definitely yeah, no, I thought on it. we have had loads of questions in the chat and i've been trying to cut and paste them through you ready for a go on and rack them through john's dared me to ask this one <laughs> if you two need any stencils he's more than happy to send you many many stencils in the post your, mine's got your, stencils your on. I didn't fudge mine. Mine's got it. Hold on a minute. Mine's got all the stencils on the top. It's just underneath where you're not going to see them because they were white. So I've got them. Take what? Oh, you two are protesting too much. I'll, I'll send him a kit and he can stencil it for me if he wants, but I ain't going <laughs> to <laughs> <laughs> The next one is from Patrick. He said, how large a window can you do with crystal clear with the PVA glue trick? Sensible answer, I guess, is... Okay, my world record is just over a centimetre square. Yeah. I think I've it was done... 11 mil I've managed to do. It's my, my record, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. I think I've managed to do, on my A400, which is basically a 72 scale airliner window. Yeah. So that's what, half a centimetre-ish? Yeah, I think. Um, it's sensible, isn't think. it? So, Franzel. round windows work better than square. That's the thing. Uh, where are yeah. we? Uh, I, I've tried to do it on an oval and it's not really worked. It's like um, frosted glass on my Pembroke because one of the windows have fell in. They can hit rattling around. So I'm going to have to. I thought, oh, I'll just 
this was a, a, um, just something so I could actually paint it, basically. I just thought, well, I'll do a quick sort of mask and PVA it and yeah. see how it dries. And obviously, it's, it's just not right. I'm going to have to sort of take it out and um, make some little windows for it. So, I mean, that's ideal scale, that. Because I must admit, yeah. when I do airliners, I never put the glass in. I just PVA no. them afterwards. And they do go crystal clear. They're not a problem at all, you know, when we did it. Oh, look, that's very similar to how this one's going to be on the stand. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so once they're in, all right, it's a rubbish photo, but you know, it's, um, you can't see they're crystal clear. They'd be absolutely fine. And also I did it on, which used to be actually one of our cover photos, um, used to be for the transor, is it the 160 C160? Yeah, it was. Yeah. You definitely did it on that. Did it on that, all the windows, because yeah. I don't mess around and hercs and stuff like that. So, but yeah. So so where did you find out about that trick then of PVA in Windows? I, I think it's, it's been, it's an old It is an old trick. one, isn't it? Yeah, I've, I know it's probably been around, you know, forever, but it's just like, you know, do you, do you remember where you heard I about it? I can't remember where I first saw it, I must admit. I know Crystal Clear works a lot better than PVA glue. Yes. Mm. Um, because, as I say, when we did this square one, yeah, it is really good stuff. Um Sometimes if you do use PVA glue, what it can do is basically build up really heavy on the outsides and be very thin on the middle. And it looks weird, but this tends to be universally. It's all okay. Mm. Um, so what? yeah, that's the reason why I, I quite like using it. it it's one what? of those ones where it's very straightforward, you know, very forgiving uh, as well. So if it goes wrong, you just pop it out and do another one. And What's you can overcoat it. Clear fix? Sorry? Hmm? Umbro clear fix. What's that? Yeah, that's basically it's a glue that dries clear, but it dries crispy clear as I call it. Yeah, right. it so was designed not... for. You can put canopies down with it as well and glue th things down to it. But is it a PVA based? No, no. The crystal clear one, if I remember rightly, is more like a resin based. It's very similar to the Tamiya white top. Right. Okay. So. Because you've done it with super glue, haven't you? Well, you polished it. What was that thing you used super glue for when you... Was it when you... I know what it was. You was filling in. Um, it was on your B24. Because you wanted the windows to be flush, if I remember. And you filled them in and polished them. You filled them in with that super glue. Yeah. Yeah. And then polished them to get the clarity back. That was it. And you can do that because you can polish the actual super glue if you polish yeah. it up. And then you give it a coat of clear just to make yeah. it go. And that's all uh, right. But uh, yeah, so there's lots of different ways of doing windows and things like that. But I think crystal clear is always the safe option. Because if it goes wrong, let it dry and just pull it out. Um, yep. And you can overcoat it. Once it's on, give it another coat. And that's actually how we did the thing. Shall I try and get it out? See if it's yeah. still clear. Bearing in mind, I don't know. Hold on, here she comes. Right, this will be the ultimate test now. Excuse the dust, it's been a while. But this is what we did. So there's a story to this. What I'm going to do, I'll do it from a distance first because it's it's not 100% and we'll see if people can spot which door is it. So The one, the one on the right. All oh, right. Okay. So yes, it may be <laughs> the one on the right. But I think we get away with that quite well. Bearing in mind it is dusty. Yeah, I wouldn't do that because you're going to knock the door off. Yeah, hold on. So you got there brush. It is. But that's crystal clear, this lower door. Mm. What happened to the glass? Did you lose it or smash it? didn't it? have it. That was the point. This oh, is the wrong kit. It. I've got the wrong one. And in this kit, you've got all the parts to do it. Apart from it's got a solid door. It doesn't right. have the window on the bottom on this side. It does on this one, yeah. but not on this one. So, yeah, we ended up having to... Cut, I cut it off to make it a hole and then we PVA glued it. So, but it's a bit dusty as you can see all of it, but there it's we go. It's not that bad though, is it? No, I thought we got away with it really. Yeah. So. You should bring that up the shop. Yes, it's nice and colourful. I'll give it a yeah. dust because clearly it needs it. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to do a repair on the rotor head, admittedly. But that was it. It's alright that one. Because the glass was not a great fit on that, if I remember when you you and Steve built them. To be honest, it? if you remember, this under here wasn't a good fit. So what I did was I five-minute epoxied it with resin and I actually took it to my belt sander. Yes. 
and I cut it all back and just did this in and then we went back and had to put all this detail back in it um, and that's a bit of photo etch on the bottom here for the cross uh, to put it all in there and we had to blend in this top because it just was horrible nothing fitted at all so yeah we took the belt sander to it but anyway she turned out all right it's funny that camera's awful because it looks orange on that and it's red it on. yeah so yes but that helicopter i think it's quite a nice looking helicopter it is yeah cool. it's it's orangey cool. color as well hmm. there we go she's all right so yes cool right next question on, next, next question um this is this sounds like a job for andy actually you know right it's asked god Gordon Graham is asking, Phil, could you put a glossary of terms on the website for old returners to modelling, such as levelling thinners, what it's used for, what are lacquers, gloss enamels, etc., etc. Like a modelling dictionary, really, isn't it? Oh, that's definitely that's a good Andy. job, though. Yeah, that sounds Andy all over it, that has. Doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Roger asked if the Easter eggs are for members or the general public. The Easter egg hunt, is it for yeah, anybody? Yeah, it's for everybody. Yeah. Everybody can go. And Darren van der Zastian, it's a quick question. How do you sand a seam line where there is a raised strip, i.e. on a fuel tank or rocket pod, so you don't lose it? And that, <laughs> with great difficulty. <laughs> yeah, very carefully. <laughs> the thing I'm is, I think the easiest way to do it is not to sand it off in the first place, if it's yeah. got it that's always the thing just avoid it um, but you can put one in and we're going to do it in a minute pop in a raised panel line just use a very sharp blade and just cut it and you'll make a V and then when it has a wash it'll fill the V as well with it but it's raised so when you run your finger over it and dry brushing and weathering and stuff it gives the effect I've got the same thing on these tornado fuel tanks I've got here they've got raised detail on them and to be honest I just I just go with the scriber and turn them into recessed yeah there's, there's nothing I can do to keep them at all. Um, I, I'm just going to scribe them in, but it's that's a tricky question. Next one is, I've forgotten the colour myself, John MacArthur's building the Ravel Matchbox Tiger Moth, and what colour silver would be used to represent the silver dope interior? And it, it's it's the Tamiya lacquer paints the best. LP11, isn't it? LP11, yeah, LP11 I think, is my go-to. Yeah. Question from Matt. Rob's asking if we get in the Daswork 132 Salamander as a pre-order. Yes, actually. I'll get Andy to put that up. Yeah, I forgot that was coming out. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. And Dell's oh. asking, I'll, I'll go for a rummage in a minute. He's got the Sword 48 scale Lightning T5. He'd started yeah. to put the wing walk lines on, but they broke up in the water. He's looking for aftermarket wing walks for a lightning. I can't think of any. Is there any way around it? Because they curve. As you get towards the wing yeah, room, the line right. curves. Yeah. I think if Dell sends me a PM, I might be able to get some spare Could air you, um, decals. Couldn't you actually sort of do it with paint, mask them? Yeah, thing. Mm. You know, you know, like the infinity boards, you can have like obviously you can cut yeah. the tape very thin and then just bend it into shape and, and actually paint. Even if you're just painting on the one that's broken up and then, yeah, you know, the tricky one, isn't it? Because it curves. It, it, it's not it, a straight line. I tell you what, I've got here, and I bet Phil's got some. Hold on. And yes, I, I have got three M stuff. This stuff. Yeah. This micro, I can't think what it's called. What's it called, Phil? Isn't it a zoo or something, isn't it? It's absolutely. I bet you can't even see it on camera. Yeah, hold on, I can. Oh. I'll show them on an overhead here. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, hold on, I've got mine on as well. So, I this know. stuff's tiny, tiny, tiny. It's put it on my. So, or if you've got an infinity board like we've done here, this cuts down to like 0.4. 0.4. Because this is what I'm going to use for my um, stuff around the canopy framing, you know, the ceiling on my Buccaneer. Yes. That's... I've got some stuff still in its packet there, look. Oh, yes. Yeah, look, three and two. Yeah. But you say, yeah, you can use it for, like I did, for the ceiling on the Buccaneer. That's all that is. It's tape. But they do, yeah, because I've got this one that's just uber thin. And like I did for the 
um, Wessex, you can colour this in with a Sharpie. Yeah. So I coloured it in with a Sharpie and turned it into straps and various things. Mm. So. Well, like I say, if you've got an infinity board, just use Tamiya tape, you cut it to... Yeah, down to 0. 0.4, 0. 0.4, 0. 0.5, 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7, 0. 0.8, 9 and 1 mil. So, well, and then no. you can go the other way, because then you can go along in 5, 10, up to 19. <laughs> going in the other direction. But, but I'll tell you what, it would probably look more authentic sprayed on as well if you can be bothered to mask it. Hmm. Look better rather than the decal. But, yeah. yeah I think that's the trouble, isn't it? When you get aftermarket decals, it's just sort of the main ones. You never sort of get the stencil decals, do you? So, kind of stuck with the kit ones or... Yeah, yeah. Or none at all, so... It is a problem. I might have some spare Airfix ones. I might, I don't know. I'll have a look later. Fair but fair. the old Airfix ones are probably going to be horrendous to put down anyway, because they're yeah. ain't really old ones. Lynn was asking about P51, and then we've got a question about a Nakajima Kate. Um, so, Lynn, I think we talked about this, um, the wings on the P51 yesterday. Did they putty the top and the bottom? The underside and top. I don't know if they did both. I don't know I if they did both. They definitely did the top. I don't know. Don't know. Anybody in YouTube chat know if they putty both sides of the wings of a P51? Um, definitely the top. But I say the bottom's got all the access panels and things, isn't it? So I don't know. Yeah. And Martin is asking something that I think I'm going to do a Japanese build soon myself. To put those away. He's building a Nakajima Kate at the moment. What's the best way to weather and fade the paintwork? So Japanese paint is a peculiar thing, isn't it, from World War Two? Yeah, yeah but it did weather. It, it, like it worked great paint. I was going to say I don't think it was good paint because only pictures you see of them it's usually hanging off. I was going to say it was yeah, just big flakes of it missing. Yeah. Um. Again, it's, it's Jamie on because I know he's done some Japanese aircraft yeah. and weather them too. He, he's definitely the man to ask for that, isn't he? Mm. It's, just, it's kind of a there's a very particular method to Japanese aircraft, isn't there, from World War Two? There is. There's actually a very good magazine out. One of the I don't know if it's the one of the AK weathering ones or whatever on Japanese. I'm sure it's on Japanese aircraft. That's a good source. Um, mm. Again, with it, it, is that that would be green? Would it be green on top or grey? Kate, I'm trying to think of the. Have a look. Pass. I'm going to say if it's green on top and you really want to fade it down, then um, to do what's it called? Flesh. XF15 is good for lightning and well, you know, bleaching out green. It looks like you've got the option to do green. Yeah. Or again, because it weathers so much, you could do the air spray technique on that, and then yeah, put just chip darker it. a darker shade of green as your base colour, and then a lighter one, and then chip it. Mm. Yeah. And give it some texture that way. Um, mm. Or literally just silver and green on top, and then proper like it would have weathered in real life, and, and chip mm. it back to to the bare bare skin. Yeah. There's yeah. loads, loads of options for it. I've never built a Japanese aircraft. I don't think I've ever, ever built a Japanese aircraft. Even as a kid, I haven't built a Zero or anything. And I never yeah. have I. I must admit, I've done 48 scale stuff, but I've yeah. never done 30 second. That's why we got them in, because I wanted to have a crack at that. So it'd be a nice one yes. to do. So I, I did one. It was for the group build we did the other year. Mm. A year or two ago. That's the only one I've ever done. Yeah. No, like mm. Steve built the Raiden, didn't he? He's, he's done one. Yeah. Uh, Zukimori Raid and that, but never, no. A bit odd, really. <laughs> Should we answer this question? Because it's popping up a lot in YouTube yeah. um, chat. On. They're talking about the wing that wing situation. Now, yes. we weren't going to talk about this purely because we don't know any concrete facts about it. But obviously, it's come out on the net. I've been talking to a few people. Um, and again, I personally don't think we want to comment on it until we get a proper response from wingnut wings basically if you don't know there's a rumor going around at the moment which seems to have pretty good um you know authority to it that wingnut wings are closing 
um, because of obviously, I don't think it's so much what's happened with the COVID-19 crisis and stuff like that. I think it's generally as a company that, you know, it's not an ongoing situation with them and they're canceling projects and various things. There's supposed to be a statement coming out in a week or two about it. Um, but again, but seeing how things are at the moment uh, and how things are going in the world, I should think everything's gone out the window um, until we find out exactly what's going on. Because obviously New Zealand's being hit just as hard as everywhere else. But again, I know you guys are talking about it down here. It's come up a couple of times when I've been watching it this afternoon. We have spoken about it earlier, um, but I think what we'll do, we'll just wait until we get an official announcement um, because say, there's a lot of rumours going around the internet. I've been contacted lots today and I spoke to a couple of people today about it, um, you know, saying, is it true and everything else? And as I say, I haven't any more information than what anybody else is getting at the moment. It's just that it's come from a couple of sources, which are usually very, very good. Um, and, you know, the, the rumblings under the surface seem to be saying it as well. If that's true or not, as I say, I'm going to wait for them to make official announcement about it first. If they are going, you would hope somebody might pick up some of their tooling from them, like a Lancaster. Um, but if they do go, I think it'll be a really, really will be a shame, um, you know, to lose a company that has got a very niche market. I think they probably have struggled being World War One. Um, and to be honest, we were discussing before saying it might have been one of those really strange situations where we said they should have chucked a Spitfire out just to pay the bills. You know, yeah. if they had done a main, I know it sounds because we always, and that's it, we're hypocritical saying it because we're the first ones to complain when we say oh, another Spitfire, another <laughs> yeah. Mustang, you know, another 109. Christ, give us a break. We're, the place is flooded with them. But you can almost see whilst companies do it is, you know, they do sell you know, and they sell a lot of them. So in some ways you think to yourself, do you know what, you know, if perhaps if they had done that and just chucked out a Mustang or, and because it's Wingnut Wings, you know it would have been a beautiful kit, giving Tammy a run for their money with their stuff every time, um, you know, but unfortunately they, they've stuck to what they do, you know, that's what they do, that's their passion. Um, and unfortunately it does sound like they're running out of, you know, funds and, and things like that to do it. So as a business going forward, as we said, we'd all love to do it as a hobby, but it has to pay the bills at the end of the day. You can't just do things for nothing. Even if Peter Jackson does need to do another film, perhaps, mm. <laughs> yeah. to pay for his hobby. But unfortunately, but again, I'm going to wait literally until we get a full statement from Wingnut Wings to say um, what's going on. So I've spoken to the guys at Wingnut Wings for many, many years at Telford and things like that. They're a great bunch of guys. And if they are going, it really, really will really, be really sad. Um, you know, not only just to the World War One uh, community, because they really pioneered that through modelling, I think, over the last few years, but I think the hobby in general, because they have uh, become a benchmark, you know? Yeah, I'd say it'd be a sad day for the hobby if they do pack in, because yeah. of, like, what they have mm. brought to the table with the kits, the designs, the engineering of it, even, yeah. even down to the instructions. Mm. Yeah that people are starting to copy and clone because they are brilliant instructors. And they are the best the at it. There's no doubt about it. it. Um, yeah. yeah. Let's, hope, let's hope it's not true. Yeah, I have to say, I'm hoping that perhaps it's just they're going to cut back, perhaps. And perhaps yeah. they'll delay things like the Lancaster because there's a massive amount of money has been poured into that already. It'll be a yeah. shame if it doesn't come out. But how many are they realistically going to sell? We've discussed this from a commercial point of view with me and Matt with the business. Like, yeah, we're we going to stock them. How many are you going to keep? You know, it's it's one of those things where you just don't know. So going forward, but again, it, we'll wait and see, see what happens. If we get an official announcement. Obviously, we'll talk about it and we'll cover it. But it really, really will be really sad if they do go. It'll be, you know, a dark day in the hobby, I think. Yeah, I think, I, think, I think as modelers, if Figgy ought to get together and... Um stop it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. everybody yeah. pre-order with them but you know what's that you know the other thing this could be a commercial bluff because you now know wing that wings kits are going to sell out worldwide yeah <laughs> so it could yeah. be a very nice double bluff by you know an announcement and they'll turn around and say it wasn't from us you know yeah. An Would unconfirmed be. source has said it and now it, the, it, the world stock of wing that wings kits has sold out instantly I was going to say, I'll be back in 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I yeah, no, Not good. Go on. Sorry, Nate, carry on. I mean, we had the thing with, with testers paints a while ago, didn't we? Mm. 
turned out to be somewhat. That was a fake, fake news. I don't know. I mean, it, um, John is saying on our chat that the prices of Wingnut Wings kits on eBay have already gone daft, which doesn't surprise me. Peter's got a good solution. He should do Bilbo on ice to bring in some money. <laughs> That'll be it. That's what they need. Yeah, and he's the only one to respond, I think, about the P-51 wing, and he seems to think because it's an airflow and aerodynamic thing they did it for, that it would make sense that the top and the underside was was um, putted. Hmm. And I've lost the plot a little bit. We've had a lot of chat about um, Japanese colours and primers and, I don't know how you pronounce it, Aotaki paints and stuff. So I think if I've missed any questions, just... Pop yeah, them chuck them in again. again, guys. Bang them down the bottom. It's very difficult I've to keep up with them all. cleared my little list off, so please put the question on again if I've missed it. Uh, Bilbo and Ice, would I pay to see that? <laughs> <laughs> Get Gollum Better than be going fine. to see Disney on Ice, I think. <laughs> uh, the Easter egg hunt's going to be dangerous. I've got 500 quid to spend. That's <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're gonna have to go hunting. That's the thing. It's it's it'll be somewhere on the the site. Say, so and it is. I'll show you a picture of it all at the end of the show, so you know what you're looking for. But all you do is click it, and it'll then take you through. Uh, guys are still talking about that. Few Phil. A few shows ago, I asked about 132nd Cora Models Latvian Gladiator decals. And he said he was checking, but didn't answer. Uh, so I sent an email to PM Models, but no response. It's been a week. Sure, I'll have a look. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get the staff, that. clearly. Yeah, yeah, I bet now. Andy actually, Andy and somewhere. So if Andy has a look and messages me, I'll let you know during the show. There you go. And right. he is in behind the scenes. Andy's actually yeah, working. He's, he's, he's actually working amazingly. So we're okay. At least somebody's man yeah. in the the, uh, the building. Right. Uh, guys, thank you for the show. Been watching for the last two weeks. Quick question. How are Roden kits uh, yeah. to do? I'm just back to modelling after 40 plus years. <gasps> Ooh, well, yeah, I wouldn't start with a Roden kit then. No. You could ask Bryn about this because Bryn started one. Well, sorry, Bryn's a friend of ours. Who, yeah. Uh, he uh, he started on the cup, and he's yeah. probably watching. And then he's put it in a box and put it to one side. <laughs> so it can be a bit of a handful, I think. It's a flight way of putting it. Yes. I I have to agree. Roden aren't my go-to manufacturer. Let's put it like that. Roden kits tend to be very much like limited run kits. Take a little bit of work. You might have some fit issues. You know, certainly if you're coming back after 40 years, I wouldn't start with a Roden kit. I might try and no. look for something else. The Mohawk, the Roden Mohawk was the last thing I tried to build. That was a nightmare. So. Uh, it depends. I'm going to say it depends. Can you put up what he's looking to build? Mm. Yeah. Because they do a lot of World War One stuff in 72nd. Um, what was that thing? Oh. What Ron bought? What you the VC ten? Yes. Was yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the because yeah. we sell some, don't we? Which is the bigger stuff they do one one four four galaxies and stuff like that. So. And also Roden, didn't they do that um, cub and stuff like that? The uh, not that one, the one that John bought, the electronic warfare one as well. That four. Yeah, the cub. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, the AN twelve. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say that, but Bryn started. Um, yeah, and then lots of like DC6, DC7s. Yeah. Yeah. All loads of like. But like Ron's one, the classic stuff. with Ron's. We did it here as a, somewhat as a joke, couldn't it? Because yeah. his the windows uh, down the side of the VC10 being like an airliner, you'd hope they'd all be the same, but as it got nearer yeah, the tail, they got smaller. And it was <laughs> like, until the one at the end, it didn't have any. And it was like, what's going on? And it's like, fine, 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 getting smaller, smaller, smaller. And as you went down the windows, they just went to nothing. And it's like, what is that about? And then talk about banana fuselage, yeah. So it's funny though because they do a T twenty eight and forty eight. Yes. Yeah. And I've seen a few of them built up actually. It shows them. They look brilliant. They look really nice. So mm. I, I think they can be a bit did, hit and miss. They did Sorry. a World War One tractor, and that was all right. Yeah, the Hulk tractor with the guns and stuff. Yeah, they actually, I don't think the armor's too bad. Hmm. I think it's more the aircraft that they do, but again, you don't have to shout up on what he's thinking of 
I'm going to build him. Yeah. You know. All right. And Dennis said that the star lift is good, but it's got thick plastic. But that's the thing. They're okay, aren't they? Roden kits are okay, but you've got to put some time into them, I think. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely worse kits than Roden. They're but... not going to fall together, are they? You need to put your hours no. in onto it. You know, you're just going to get your pound of flesh. But again, they do some really interesting subjects. So, like everything, if it's the only thing that's available, you're going to have to build it. Yeah. You know, so just take your time with it and go for it. Uh, any tips for straightening out a bent propeller on the Revel 148 scale JU871? Uh, should I try boiling an ice water combo sufficient to fix it? Spoke about this a couple of days ago, wasn't it? Resin, hot water, you can reshape it, it's not a problem at all. The trouble you find with plastic is that, you know, to get it that hot to be able to bend it and all the rest of it, they tend to change their molecular structure and they, they spring back anyway. I would just try brute force and ignorance and maybe a little bit of heat, if anything, to warm it up. Um, we're not talking about like getting a blowtorch on it, but a hot, you know, a hairdryer on hot. Try that just enough to move it because the plastic will melt so you can bend it that way. But the trouble with styrene, not all of them are the same. You find Hasegawa's is very hard, doesn't like to bend anyway. And you get things like Airfix tend to be very soft. So there's no like temperature to set it to or anything else. It's just that sweet spot. It's a bit like when I bend this, you know, we'll do it over the weekend or on Monday. It won't move, it won't move. And then it's like jelly, you know, and that's it, it goes. It's just instant. It's all or nothing when you're bending this stuff as well with solid acrylic. So, and it is, it's just finding that temperature. I don't know. Any ideas, guys? I mean, Ravel plastic, I just depends. Without a picture, I'm not sure. I remember when I did the Airfix Heinklen to feather the props, I just used brute force. Bent it. So, I don't know, it's risky, isn't it? Hmm. Brute force and ignorance, my way of doing it. Yeah, yeah. I must admit, I I'd am be definitely a brute just force to person. Bend it the other way, and just depends how. But that's seeing how bad it is, I couldn't comment. But I wonder if there's like a quick boost resin aftermarket. Yeah. Set the only thing that's it. quite handy, Rebel plastic's very soft, so if you are brute forcing it, the chances are it'll just bend and won't snap. Where if you were doing Hasegawa, it might just snap and ping off on you, because yeah. their, their styrene's a lot harder. So in some ways, I know we complain sometimes that like Airfixes, uh, Italieri's, things like that, their, their styrene tends to be quite soft. When you're bending it, it's better, because it's easier to work with. So yes. Apparently, read the P-51 wings, it looks like they were only putted on the top. Oh, right, okay. Which makes sense, because underneath it's got access -y panels and all sorts going underneath it, isn't it, I think? Yeah. So... I'm not sure. Mm. Right, just um, ignore me for a minute, because I'm just going to have a look for these decals. Yeah. <laughs> so what Graham's was it? Stop. Was it Gladiator 32nd, was it? Yeah. I've got a question from Graham that's come up. The other day we we mentioned the four basic Abtalung 502 colours to use. Are there any other colours that you'd recommend? That add to the four. Hmm. Depend. I mean, you can get blues and yellows if you do a lot of green aircraft, can't you? Yeah, it depends what you. Yeah, it depends what you. Especially, you know, what you're painting as well, doesn't it? What you're doing. Underneath. Here's a good one. <laughs> Sab says, can you say anything about Mac? I think he means Mac 2 kits. It's got their VC10. And it's a really bad uh, scraping flash monster. Is this normal? Yeah. 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 I'm, not, I'm not having that. I ain't buying that. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest we joke about you need to wear gardening gloves to handle their kits because it's like handling a rose bush you're going to cut yourself to shreds <laughs> just wrong you're all wrong no we're not you know we're not <laughs> it, says the, it says me who's never built one <laughs> precisely I've seen yours and everybody else's it tends to be the joke everyone comes up saying have you seen the state of this I've reviewed them and it's like ah look at that what is that it's like the moulds don't meet <laughs> but you, hey, you've got to say though, they're really interesting subjects. Yes, yes. Yeah, they, they do do some know, very interesting subjects. Yeah. 
to be fair, he tackles stuff that nobody else would even consider looking at. So, you yeah. know, you've got to look at it that way as well, you know, so... I mean, that's the choice, isn't it? If you don't like their VC10, you're going to have to scratch build it from plastic art. Yeah. Isn't there, isn't there uh, an old fact form 72nd VC10? I, I still think you're better off scratch building it from plastic art and pipe. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> right, on this decals... Yeah. No, can't find them at all. So I would say they're either not out yet or our supplier doesn't stock them. Right. Okay, because I've found sort of everything else to do and uh, unless I'm looking, I'm just checking I'm not in the wrong place. I have looked in the military decal section, so I presume it would be in there. And I've not heard back from Andy yet, so I think he must have fell asleep. That's having a nap. <laughs> yeah, he's having his nana nap. That Andy's that going to do it, it, do it. Where's the link? Oh, let's go back. Plastic Fantastique is that there. Oh, no, that's a Mustang with a putted wing on the underside. Oh, so the P-51 mink wing thing is not settled yet. I'll tell you what, I'll just actually have a look at the kit itself to see what comes up because what's a frisket masking sheet because bob c is asking can you give any recommendations for making his own markings with frisket masking sheets i've no idea what they are aren't they then clear self-adhesive sheets oh, yeah. god I, I know what it is i just it's a bit hard to explain you need one of those cry cut cut of things if you're making your own markings really so, sorry going back to this gladiator yeah yeah what was what did he what was it country was it finished no <laughs> oh <laughs> no. jesus hold on sorry I have to uh, be a... brisket film yeah i've heard of it mm. oh is that happened it no not mine going off uh, see, see. It was uh, the Latvian Gladiator decals. Latvian. Latvian. Right. Okay. Uh, no, then. No. I've got Finnish, <laughs> but not Latvian. It oh. is. That's Andy. Apparently, it's number four eight one eight. Forty eight. Four. Yeah. Yeah. But we want Andy. We want thirty second. It is 30 second, isn't it? Yeah, he's saying 30 Not second. Okay. Andy's given the code. He's just messaged me the code. Right, okay. Uh, cause... Right, will you lot talk and I'm going to scribe. Oh, he's going to scribe. So... Well, look, it's gone wrong all day, so what else can go wrong? Okay, so um, <laughs> you probably can <laughs> see over on here, what this is what happened to me the other day. Um, we were trying to do it and it went horrendous because the primer started peeling off as I cut into it. So what I did was I gave it a coat of um, very rapid drying lacquer thinners to try and stabilize it, i.e. to melt it all back together. So, and to be honest, I was on with the guys in the evening and it went completely wrong and we ended up, literally, I gave it a coat of gloss black, Tamiya X1 gloss black. And actually, as you probably see, it turned out really well. We've almost got like stressed skin and it's worked but the trouble is i haven't done the other side so now i've got to try and put all the scribing back in blind because bearing in mind i've lost all the panel lines and i've got to remember where they all are and everything else but actually i think it worked quite well now in our defense this bit here is all black anyway it has a huge big black sway from the exhaust here and it humps up down to the back and it's all in black so it's not so much of a problem what's going to go on here because we're not going to see anything but what we've done is we've had to put in as you can probably tell this kit is raised details everywhere and they're quite nice so we've had to go back in and to be honest they're very very fine and it has worked quite nicely so what we're going to try and do is recreate what we did the other night live because i wasn't recording clearly because uh, i thought i'd just have a little go so what we did was we turned a complete nightmare actually into a bit of a success so we're going to try and recreate what we did now I know lots of people now will be getting things like templates 
uh, I'll just add it here, what have I done with it? The carving tape, which I've moved, here it is. We've got carving tape, and this is what started to go wrong, because I started using the carving tape to put it down, and it was peeling it back down to a coat of silver, which I gave it, just for a, because I was using it up, and that's what it wouldn't stick to. So we're gonna go in, and we're gonna try and do it raw. So I'm using a blade, so I've snapped off a new one, so it's just literally in there like that, okay? I'm not a fan, to be honest, of using things like these, purely because I'm a klutz and I find the point is too sharp. It sort of goes in too well. So I like to use something with a, uh, this is Olaf blades in here, I think they are. Or Ola blades or whatever they call them. O Olaf <laughs> blades, yes, yeah, see, mutilated that as well. Okay, so what we're gonna try and do is, one, try and see where it was all before and then using the pictures that I've got on the side there, roughly put them in as they were before. So to start with, I'm gonna try and pop, there's one that goes right from the front to the back. Once we get that one is, it'll be a guide for doing the others. And then the other ones, to be honest, I can roughly still see them faint here, and then I might be able to carry them through. The problem I have got, there's a couple of diagonal ones, which we have got in here, we need to sort of recreate. I'm trying to catch it in the shine so you guys can see it as well. Okay, so starting off, we're gonna try and put this back one back in here. So I'm guessing, and this is a great thing with a hobby because it's all about guesswork. So we're gonna pop this one in here. I'm trying to visualize where I'm going to go. So it's a bit like playing pull. Okay, so we're just coming along and we're pulling straight. Okay, so we just pop that one in. And when you run your finger over, you can feel it, it's raised. Okay, and then off we sort of go. So we know we've got, and I'm going from the other side to this side, we've got another one that sort of comes up here. And again, you're not pushing, you're just dragging. And when you run your finger over, you can feel it. So what we're sort of hoping is, this is all gonna sort of peel and, and do its bit. Okay, so we know we've got one down in here and it comes up. And again, we've got a light, small little tear lift appearing. Oops. So that means it's gonna do what it did last time. Okay, so we're just gonna pull this up. So what we're gonna end up doing is doing what we did last time, again, no doubt. So we're just equal distances, pulling this up. Okay, one up here. Okay, then we've got a row of rivets and things in here. And we're just gonna come up to there. And then again, for this one, because of this access box, we're thinking it's about to there. And then again, in between both. So we're just popping these in. You can see it's tearing up. So we will attempt to cause what we did last time, the same type of thing. So we'll just come along and we'll pop in some thinners and then hopefully it's all gonna work. I say hopefully very loosely. Okay, so that's our raised and it is all raised. You can hear it. What can go wrong? See that? And it's starting to peel off a little bit. Uh, this isn't going wrong, this is gonna be fine. Okay. Uh, I have every faith in you. That's it. I'm a professional. Way, can I just say, them decals are not available from any of our stockists. No. Oh. Unfortunately. Um, Andy has found the part number and found them, but we can't get them, I'm afraid. Right. So, sorry about that. Okay, so the trouble I've got is I can't get my blade in to these said areas. Okay, so we know we've got this thing going on here, which is like a diagonal. And then off of this other side. It is, it's like a diagonal which then comes back up. Okay, and run it through the middle. 
Okay, then it looks like this one comes along through the front. It's all peeling, it's doing what it did last time. Is it? Yeah. Stress skin, yeah. eat your heart out. Yeah. Okay, it's, so we're popping all of this be... all back in. Hopefully you can see it's raised, even if it is peeling. Oh. Hey, tell you what, that undercarriage fits nice on these fucking ears. It does, it, it clicks in a butte, doesn't it? I'm, I'm, I'm fighting, so I don't need to fight there. Hmm. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Okay, so we're just going to oh. take this panel right up to the canopy. Hey, happy days. Okay, so we're going to take this panel around the back of the canopy. Oh my god. Yeah, that is that is, isn't it? Yes. No, front and carry front front leg. I don't know what that is. Okay, just one across. Okay, so that's. I think we just need another small one, just then in here. Mm -hmm. That helps if you put it actually in the right way around. Buccaneer undercarriage does look like it's been put on backwards. I have, I have just put the front wheel on back, back to front. <laughs> that ain't gonna work. So, there we go. Happy How's that. that look? Messy. Fantastic. So what we're going to do is soften it back in now with some... So we're going to soften this back in with our wonder product. <laughs> Lapid thinner. <laughs> if in doubt, lack of thinners. Okay, so... If I do it on a good camera, so you can see what we do. Let's get rid of this. Uh, enamels. I don't want that. I need something a bit harsher. Now, the whole point of using rapid drying thinners is that it can't do it too much. That's the theory to this. Okay. So, mm -hmm. when we put this on, it, it all happens so quickly. We won't worry about what's all over the brush. Okay. That it sort of melts, does its bit, and then dries back and everything's okay but what you want to do is keep it wet because if you start to drag you lose all that detail so there it is and then we'll let this dry off and see what happens and then hopefully it's going to do the same and we're going to come up with something like that which has this sort of stress skin effect and everything's all back in there but bearing in mind we have no detail at all. But the thinners, what hopefully it'll do is literally melt down into whatever's underneath. And also these areas that it was peeling and blistering with will then sort of give a stressy skin type effect, which I've never done anything like this on 70 second before in my life. So you guys are all with me as well, because I've never tried this. So, what we'll do, we'll just let this sit and dry and see what happens. But actually already you can see the panel lines coming back. So yeah. it's working just as well. So this is a typical uh, Flory style of a happy little accident. So what actually <laughs> was going to go in the bin the other night is actually working very, very well. And I've learned something that by putting down a couple of coats of primer and then perhaps a coat of paint, then scribing into it, or in this case, uh, just coming in and doing a, uh, a raised panel line job by going back over it it softens the areas of the paint and causes a stress skin effect 
And again, we've got all these details and you don't have to be 100%. And I know you've probably got people screaming at the screen and everything else saying, oh, that's wrong and the power line's wrong. Honestly, it looks good to me, you know, and it's 70 second and no one's gonna see. So I think I'm very happy about how it's going, but it is all starting to dry back, you can see it. And the rapid thinners, this will be dry to touch in around about 10 minutes even though you've just wetted down heavy gloss it should be absolutely fine so we should get a good look at it then we can give it another coat of something probably another coat of gloss just to see exactly what we did on this side to see what's exactly going on once it's stabilized because obviously the primer underneath that's going to be wet that's going to be reactivating and going funny again so you need everything to be dry before we get in but we've popped in all of that detail all back down in there and actually it seems to be working quite well so we're happy with that. So we'll let it dry and we can do a few more questions along the way. How's it going then, guys? How's it going, Matt? All right, thank you. Yeah, the assembly carriage is quite well designed, isn't it? It is, because I didn't glue mine until it was all in. Yeah. No. And then went so, through um, the motions of sorting it all out. Yeah. It's got a nice detail as well, isn't it? Just pops yes. when you put a bit of a wash on it. Yeah, no, be good on it. And Nathan? I'm still drilling holes for vortex generators. Oh my lord. How many's it got? Um, oh. About 45 on each wing. <laughs> <laughs> got about 8, 9 to go. Fantastic. Bit of a, a It'll be job. worth it when it's all done. Yeah. So you're not regretting that decision, are you? A little bit. I mean, it wasn't too bad because what I did is I ran, I got the widest setting rivet wheel that I've got yeah ran a load of rivets down it and i'm drilling out every other rivet which is about the right sort of spacing but yeah it's i'm starting to get like a repetitive strain injury i think yes <laughs> <laughs> that is the trouble yeah there's a couple of questions if we're ready yeah go for it yeah. there's a rumor going round, and this one i think is true this is from christopher he's read an article that the luftwaffe are getting f-18s <gasps> they are they are but f's and g's we think isn't it yeah they find the f and the g's so when, what did i say i did i doubt all the official stuff for it yeah, i think it's 30 oh i've got a delivery coming you don't know we'll see i don't know van just pulled up out the front if the dogs go mental in 30 seconds i do apologize but yeah they're getting 30 <laughs> f's and 15 g's Mm. So the F is going to be the upgraded, the new one with the glass cockpit where it's all touchscreen. Um, and they're getting also the Growler, which is obviously the electronic warfare version uh, for doing all that. And Nathan, you were saying it replace, it will replace the, which version is e it? It's the ECR, which is like their um, anti-radiation thing. The, yeah. The launching, what, the, is it SEA? <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it's going to replace the ECR Tornado, which is their like anti radar recon type thing. So, so when are they getting them? Do you know? Don't know. All oh, right, no date for for delivery on them then. Yeah, I think quite a few people in the Tornado SIG or the Luftwaffe SIG are thinking of getting some kits and putting German crosses on them to see how cool they'd look. Oh, yeah. I'm tempted to do myself, actually. Uh, Hopefully they'll carry on with the sort of colourful schemes. I hope so. Because we knew something was up when they weren't, when the Germans stayed away from the F-35. Yeah. They're not going for the, the F-35. We knew they were going to have to do something to replace the tornadoes eventually it's like the super horn it's the way to go there's a couple of, there's loads of articles floating around on it what else have we got okay question about tamia lp paints from peter yeah about it getting spit in and build up of tamia lps with the retarder thinner at 50, right. 20 psi haven't had this since acrylics when using his h s infinity cr plus with the 0.2 needle also mm. sometimes mid spray the air seems to cut off then kick back in is it a problem with the air stem i think that's yeah. more to do with your paint mix 
but it's got yeah. all the hallmarks of it having trouble. Um, again, you know, as you say, you guys who know me, you'll know I don't do thinning ratios and all the rest of it. Listen to your airbrush. The big thing is you want to thin it probably more than you're thinking because the LP paints cover incredibly well. So from that point of view, I usually thin minimum 60% thinners into it, sometimes 70 plus uh, for those. If it's starting to stop start, chances are you're getting a gloopy bit of the mix is getting it to the needle tip you know, actually from the nozzle to the needle area and it just can't clear it. Um, and if obviously if you're getting it stopped, then that's what it is. It's more a case of actually a, a, a lumpy bit of paint. So it could be literally you just haven't mixed it enough. But like I know Matt, obviously he goes on about it quite a lot about mixing externally in a color cup. Give it a good mix, make sure it's beaten all the way through, then put it into the color cup on your airbrush, then spray it. But that sounds to me what you're describing all the hallmarks of lumpy paint where it's fine and then it stops and then it spits a bit, then you get nothing. That tends to be that your mix of paint has got solids in it. And then when they get to it, it has trouble and then it blows it out and then it runs clear for a little bit, then stops and starts. That tends to be more a case of lumpy paint than anything else. And at 20 PSI with that stuff, you shouldn't have a, a problem with it either. I've been spraying it usually around about, well, 11. If you're guessing, I can't tell, but it's very quiet. I can't hear it. So, you know, that's, that gives you a clue how thin it goes, but you can thin it probably more than you're thinking you are. You know, don't treat it quite like you do with Tamiya and think 50-50 and start with there. You can, with the normal acrylic. With the LPs, you can go a little bit thinner, uh, but listen to it. If you can hear it crackling, if it sounds like it's struggling, you know, like I did say when I was spraying this one in the video, you've got this thing where when you pull the trigger, you really shouldn't hear a difference. You get a little tone change because obviously you've got the paint coming through now, but it shouldn't sound different. You know, you've got the hiss of the air introducing paint should almost be seamless. The bit where it starts to struggle and you need a bit more oomph, it means that your paint needs thinning, thinning a little bit more. I would, I would definitely suggest dropping your air pressure. Yeah. 20 psi most of that isn't going on your model it's going out i was going to say you're just wasting paint or and, and whatever because the joy of lacquer paints is is like you can really really drop your air pressure yeah um and getting pretty close for it to to spray so you like say you're not uh, getting most of it airborne trying to push it through your airbrush yeah definitely but i would definitely say that sounds like the paint's too thick as well mm -hmm. so yeah and then Carl Brettville as well, you've just done it. He said, what would you do to fill any overruns with the scriber or the knife when you've gone scribe a bit too far? Yeah, if you go a little bit too far, honestly, um, I t like the homemade gloop, you know, which is just styrene filler. If you use it a tiny bit on there, it dries within a few minutes and you can sand it and it's seamless. Um, if you do, if you've gone over, you know, you can use super glue just for, to fill it in, as long as you're not gonna to have to rescribe near it again for a quick job, uh, and that's it. But that's normally what I do. I use, I use a little bit of glue. If I've gone too far, I just tuck back fill it with a little bit of glue. And because it's just a tiny amount, within minutes it's dry, and you can just sand it. And because it is styrene and to styrene, it's seamless, uh, and away you go. A bit of that to do myself on my javelin at some point, for being honest. <laughs> Definitely use the glue method. Yeah, just to double check. Uh, guys are talking about have glass. So funny enough, we have it here. It's available also through the PM store. So we have a very nice, uh, where are we? Look, Matt's gonna get his out. Hold on, that's it. It is available. This is the kit. We've been after this thing coming back in stock. Cause I built yeah. this. It's like building a Bandai kit. It literally clicks together. It's a beautiful kit. It's the best F35 in 70 second easily. You know, it's very, very nice. Um, but as for the colour, I can't remember which paint to use now. <clears throat> Jesus, what did I use? Anybody can remember? MRP, wasn't it? I think it is my MRP is my go-to on that. Hold on, it's down in here, the video build. <clears throat> did I say what we used? Uh, it was a quick one because it's literally just one, two, miss a few. Uh, MRP, so yeah. I have to be honest with you, as much as I love Hataka paints, I'm not a fan of their have blue colour, um, or sort of have quick, it, it, or have glass even, wrong aircraft. <laughs> um, but it. yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not right, it's well out, 
Um, so I must admit, I've done the big F16, uh, same thing. So what I tend to use is if you use MRPs, they do it as a two part. It's like the, you know, the, the metallic -y side of it and the normal one. And I just use their normal color and that's all that's on there. I don't put the other one over the top because actually none of them look it. They don't look silvery. It's not like a Raptor. The Raptor looks proper metallic, but F35s don't so that's the one I use which I can't remember which one it is now hold on I'll find it oh hello well what are you doing here uh, just to say on the uh, on the F35 we've got a few in Andy's just put them back in stock and we can get some more if they if they do sell out rather quick and get some more in so but have you have you seen this Nate just while you're on something a bit different Remember the old Airfix one? I do, yeah. So, so this is obviously Fly's newer version, but see, that, now that, that's one of the things I'd build. Yes, I like it. it yeah. There we go. It this is. is the one I like. So it's FS36170. Uh, it's F16, F35 to be used with the old Have Glass, but I don't use the Have Glass. I just use this, and that is this colour. That's what this is. It's just that and uh, it, to be honest it's it it gives a very nice scaled effect to it and all the rest of it so yeah just a coat of that it covers you beautifully go. as well so, yeah. you see john on our chat says he thinks the f35 is an ugly plane it don't do a lot for me i have it's, to say it's grown it on me i have me. to say it's definitely grown on me i'll tell you what when i saw it at react was it three years ago when it hovered that was like wow it was awesome to see it fly in the hot in a hover do you know what it did it did me two years ago when we were there and it was a bit clad in the, you know we can't fly it <laughs> no really. that was the raptor that was the f-22 was it the raptor it was the raptor the all-weather air superiority fighter that can't fly in a bit of cloud yeah if you but remember who's uh, it was the tornado was zipping around and you couldn't even see it yeah, yeah, the tornado. yeah, and then the SU-27 went up and at the end and they weren't bothered one bit, were they? No. But I think it was because of obviously the cloud cover would have ruined the display. Yeah, you is, wouldn't have seen it anyway. You wouldn't have seen much of it. <laughs> but it, it did seem quite flying. ironic that everybody else was still flying. Right, I've just given this another quick coat because it, it was drying back but not really doing as much as I wanted it to. So we're just giving it another coat of the actual rapid drying thinners right the way over it and giving it a good rub in as well this time. So we'll see what it's doing. It just seemed to come back like it was the first time. So here we go. We'll give that another mm. go. <clears throat> yeah. So yes. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, do you guys use magnifying headsets? Go on, everyone put oh, yours yes. on. Oh yeah. We've all got different types. Hold on. <laughs> that's it we need that for the uh, photo for the thumbnail <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah it was good. I yes them. so matt's got the posh ones yes by i can never remember what they're called uh donegan donegan optical company made in the usa optivisor yes i can't and remember what mine are called now i can't remember what number of glasses in it hold on but they are my go-to oh, tool five. these days it's a number five yeah you see obviously because i wear glasses i couldn't wear them with that film yeah weird. i like it because I, I look right through there and all around it and you just got the bit in the middle it's like wearing a monocle i reckon just put it on but it's very good and yeah. i must admit you know as i'm approaching 50 i'm using this more and more and more all the time it's like my eyes now are saying do you know what you've had your time <laughs> you've done well yes they have but mine uh, they're quite cheap you can get them on amazon and all the rest of it it comes with a pack of these things uh, with all the different size ones in here so you've got the proper oh. you know 
ones. You can have like but, conical. Yeah, that's it. I just have them to that one, which actually, oh yeah, it does a bit. So yes, yeah, so you got proper thick, chunky one, which is a what's that? A times three point five. Like you've rubbed an optician. Eh? I said it's like you've rubbed an optician. Yes, that's it. I've got all of these. That's what you need to do. <laughs> Are they still put, working? They put the little discs into. Yeah, that's it. Put the little your disc eyes in. And get right to... Is that better or worse? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 Any questions in our chat? There's not so much a question, more of a story. Okay. Oh what are they going, about now? Um, it's a good story. I was a bit jealous. You'll be jealous when you hear about this. Come on then. All right. He was just uh, This is from Peter Miller, who was catching up with the show from the 3rd of April. We're talking about being the, in the cockpit of an aircraft. Do you remember when he was 14 in 1979? He had a tour of the USS Enterprise. Back in 79. Um, yeah. It's a long story. So he, he was taken round by a chief petty officer. Took He was on a tour of the hangar deck, the bridge, captain's chair, and the flight deck, and he got to sit in the cockpit of an F 14. Now that would have been an F 14A, wouldn't it? In it 79. would have been then, yeah. He so said he lasted three hours, and to this day he's still grateful that he had the opportunity to have a tour. Now, I bet you'd have absolutely no chance of getting one of those type of tours these days. Oh, God, no. Yeah. No. Seeing a live Tomcat on an aircraft carrier. It's not yes. going is it? Mind you, there was the story, one of the members posted it over to me about the uh, French gentleman who's a businessman and their company made parts anyway. It's a retirement thing. He got a flight and a Raphael and he ejected himself out the back apparently so that's why they don't take people up but he's put the link to the article and all the rest of it into it but apparently he was trying to get himself on the seat properly grabbed mm. hold of the ejection handle and pulled it to pull himself and fired himself out successfully but in there they were saying the pilots didn't go because it was a malfunction but it probably wasn't set up that way the pilot probably had his differently because mm. the back seater can set them up to eject both or just them so because it was he had somebody like it in the back. Chances are it was designed not to fire it off. But there's that yeah. famous photo in there, Nate, for the tornado with uh, just the uh, pilot sat in it and no back seater with the canopy gone. Yeah, yeah. So they, they are, the caption's always on that one, available in Cabriolet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you use brake fluid to remove paint? No, I don't. Jesus. That's I've heard that's about it. I've heard stuff. you do it. That's old um, school. Don't, don't know where I get break home kids. That. <laughs> I've seen them use it on the guys who will restore die-cast cars. Yeah. For cleaning tyres and, you know, when kids have painted them. Yeah. You know, Humber or whatever it was to, to clear it. But no, I've never used it. It's a bit, a bit vicious, I think. Yes. Not something I've got in the garage. No. To be honest. Uh, the guys are all using monocles and that. That's it. They're about 1.5. That's what I'm using and reading glasses for this. Mine are 1.5. And I must admit, I've been using them pretty much solidly in all my builds these days. God, I think it's 70 seconds. You do need a good pair of goggles, I yeah. think. And you go down a bit smaller. To be honest, though, the trouble is it shows up all your faults. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it does, yeah. Gordon Webbs asks, can you spray MRP or Hatakalaka over a primer of Tamiya XF and levelling thinner? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. as long as it's totally dry. Yeah. Yeah. You can, spray, it. You can spray it over an acrylic primer. You can spray mm. it look, enamel primer as long as it's the primer's dry and vice versa with the acrylics over lacquers and all that. It's, it, it's all, as long as the paint's cured, you'll be fine. Hmm. And during such little microns anyway, it's um, it, you you won't have a problem. I think the only problem when people get the spray is when they try to rush it. Like I think you were mentioning it yesterday. Hmm. I'm as impatient as he is when I'm building and spraying. It's it's one coat or nothing instead yeah. of, and it always bites me. I know better than it. <laughs> uh, white is my nemesis colour, and yeah. it was my nemesis colour when I painted cars. 
to this, I, I probably could go back and spray a white card today, and I would probably get a run in it somewhere because uh, I'm just so impatient. So, just yeah, step it, take a step back. Yes. Let the first coat patience. Jump it. patience. It, it is. It's all, and I'm I lack it. <laughs> Proper one paint. But I think yours yours comes from like my background. As in, you were doing commissions, so the faster you can build a kit yeah. and get it through the door, the quicker you get paid. Yeah. Obviously, that was the same when I was painting cars. The faster when we was in the shop, you mm -hmm. get cars painted and out the door, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it's that scenario that's mentally grained in your head, and to get out of it is quite a hard... It is. Yeah, it absolutely. Is hard thing I, to I, I totally agree. As I say, I'm not being paid by the hour. God, I wish I was. So, yeah. and that was the thing, doing commission work, it was literally, you know, life and death almost to get them painted in and out. You've got a set amount, you've got a deadline, you've got a build to as well. Um, and doing this as I do now, I still have that pressure. I feel that pressure, even though sometimes you think, I'll tell you what, you could leave that. I'm going to build something else. Or if that video is a day late, it's not going to ruin the world, is it? So, but again, you don't. You're in that old school in yeah. your head of thinking, nope, got to do it. Going to get it finished. I've got an hour. I'll do it in an hour. Not a problem. You know? Yeah, it is. It's a weird uh, scenario. It's just, you know, it, it's generally, you know, when I'm actually doing building and finishing and deckling, hmm. I'm actually quite relaxed. As soon as I go into that bit there and put, pick a spray gun up, I'm into like, bang, I need to get it painted like now or yesterday. And I, it, like, yeah, I wish I could change my mindset on it. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, apologies to everyone who's wearing headphones with the dogs. <laughs> As I said, dog starts barking loudly. Holy moly, what a shock for the earphone users. <laughs> so, yes, they're saying, interesting, Australia uh, is the only country with a growler outside the US. Absolutely. Uh, anything left of the visitor? He's all right. He took a step back. It's a delivery. It's probably like it in every country now, but they leave it on your doorstep, take a photo of it, and then they wait to see if you answer the door. Then you take it in. You don't even touch it. And I did gel me hands, and now it's left in quarantine. What is it? <laughs> hey? What, you bad? Delivered? It's my new camera. Oh, right. Because so we... when I had that delivery earlier, was that DPD? Yeah. 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 I went out the back gate because I've, I've bought the boxes around the back to put in the garage. Mm. And he says, oh, um, I need a photo. Can you go yeah. and open the front door? So I'm like, all right. I know I do actually know the guy who does it. So I run around so he could like, open the door, <laughs> kind of push them into the doorway. Yeah. Take his photo. And then he left. I'm That's like, it. Same it. thing. Because he has to take a yeah. picture of your door number so with it next to proof, it. So. Proof they've been delivered. Yeah. <laughs> So yes, hopefully we won't have that bloody awful camera anymore because to be honest, a lot of you know, one of my cameras died a couple of months ago, but with everything that's been going on, um, I was I'm in an iron about different cameras to use. So the close-up camera is actually the one from the Spobu, which isn't designed to do this type of work. It's literally designed to do close jobs. Um, so it doesn't like it. That's why it, it doesn't like black, white, silver. So it can go back in the spray booth because at the moment the spray booth has this camera in it, which is actually uh, sorry, wrong one. Where is it? Webcam. There it is. That's actually the webcam, which actually isn't too bad. I think that's pretty clear. It's really good. Yeah. So amazing. Perhaps I'll just switch to we're using webcams. That's the old 920 webcam. Oh, that's one that <laughs> Amazon do specials on. Yeah, we just wait for the special thing and then snap them all up. Um, I've, I've got that many. I'm loaning mine out to family members so they can start. Because <laughs> every time they're off, oh, I'll have one of them. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> they are good cameras, I think. For, for, yeah. for the money as well. They, they're good value when they put them on sale. Yeah, that's it. When they're on sale. Apparently, they've been around now since... I don't know when they first got released. I know they're about nine years old, those webcams now. Well, and no, we know they've it. done a few new ones, but nothing really beats it, you know? Yeah. I quite like them. Apparently, the Super Growler deliveries start in 2025. Yeah. All right, five years then. Get, yeah. Get and like Stuart said, he's the seen tongue. the ECR Tornado in the white Tiger Meat colours. Looked awesome. I remember seeing that one at React a couple of years ago. Yeah. And it was nice that was. Yeah. They called it that's Ice Tiger or something, wasn't it? Does the Growler fire harm missiles? Because that's what the yeah, ECR Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yours got the jammer pods on the wingtips you know and then it carries the sort of buzz pods underneath it and then can carry as well a couple of uh, harm missiles on the outer racks oh you'll know this f4es yeah 
I protect it as a Gowers is the best kit in 48 if you wanted one. It's the only one, I think. Because no, nobody else has brought well, one out yet. Old, there is the old Delary one. Oh, yeah, I was but, scratching that one. A kit that's usable. No, yeah. why? And it's not even a German one. Um, is it Icarus decals? Or somebody's put out some Greek um, Phantom decals. Yeah, yeah. And they look stunning. It's proper good tail art. And it's, it's the nice Greek... Um, F four colours. Yeah. I'll tell you one I quite like because of the nose art speaking of it, it's the Turkish F fours. Because they got yeah. proper teeth on them and all sorts on theirs. Theirs look really mean. Uh, uh, yeah, apparently they're saying too. is there any rumour to the Japanese will be to buying the F twenty three, which is the Y F twenty three, which is the Black Widow, which I had somewhere, wherever I've done with it. Oh it's up there. Uh did that kit. Um, again, because uh, I don't know. There's a rumor going around a couple of years ago, wasn't it, that they were going to, because they won't let the Japanese have the F-22 because of some ruling uh, that they're not <laughs> allowed to have it. And they turned down, are they having the F-35, Japan? I don't know. I think so. So. I think they are, you know. But they apparently are. their stealth program, they did do a demonstrator, a stealth demonstrator, but the, I don't know, perhaps it cost too much. So I think, Haven't the US government got an export ban on the Raptor? I think so, yeah. Yeah, the Japanese have got the F-35 A and B, I think it's saying it. Mm -hmm. That's why Hasegawa have done the boxing, I think, of the Japanese one. Yeah. Yeah. And got a quick question about Tamiya Extra Thin Cement from Nigel. Mm -hmm. So he's having problems with Tamiya Extra Thin Cement not working when the seam has got a tackle lacquer on it. Yeah, and to be honest with you, Tammy Rector Friend doesn't like painted surfaces full stop. It can't eat into it, or it takes a bit to eat into it before you get a bite, doesn't it? It yeah. definitely works better on bare plastic. It's better and on bare plastic. The thing is, if you soak the area a little bit and then place it on and just nudge it around a bit, it's fine. Yeah. I don't know, I know what the time is. I'm <laughs> you aware. Are you getting it <laughs> I'm being... <laughs> as long as we sent in. Yeah, that's it. Lola's there as well. They're both sat here looking at me and saying, what's going on? Um, but no, so what I always tend to do is like place the part and then extra thin and let it eat in. It'll wrinkle up. It looks nasty, but it does dry back flat. And funny enough, I did the refueling probe on the Buccaneer. I didn't think it would work, but I used the quick set and it worked a treat on that. It did it and held it, mm. um, but it definitely works better on bare plastic. Yep. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, they're, all right, they're all about stripping paint now. Yeah, Kent on our chat reckons there'll be an export ban on the F the F23 as well. Yeah. I think it's, the, so they, is, that, is that going into production then and see in the light of day? Well, I didn't think it was. I thought that was yeah. it. it was tech was, demonstrator and lightning yeah, got it. Yeah, because built that one in the Russian scheme, wasn't it, for a mess hmm. around of what you were doing? I yeah. thought it was just a like a... a prototype it was it's was part of the atf program concept. wasn't it in the 90s oh, yeah. like it, was, a concept it lost to the raptor didn't it yeah it lost that to the raptor but yeah uh, well, the guys are all talking about it down in here no export version for it and the no export allowed for the f22 which is fair enough uh anything uh anything to look out for on the trumpeter 130 sec, sec second section in my head uh english electric lightning f1 or f3 kit no it's not very accurate as a lightning but it looks like lightning and it's a big lump and they look impressive built they and do look, but they don't... buy yourself oh. decals because the kit decals are horrible yeah definitely yeah. Uh, yeah don't yeah don't trust the decals but um, no, no, no i think their 30 second stuff comes together really nice to be honest it's yeah hmm yeah I think it's just dimensional errors. It's, it's not something that screams at you once it's built up. I think yeah. the belly tanks are a little bit. But it's not something too short, you can too long. Take. It's yeah, it looks it's, okay. It's not something you can correct easy though, either, is it? No. No, I mean you're doing some serious sort of surgery to get the belly tanks looking right. I think the canopy is a bit out, but again, it's one of those things that once it's in 3D, mm. yeah, it looks. It looks everything, it looks every bit of the lightning to me. Yes, I'd say it looks like a lightning, so yeah. 
Hey, uh, there's rumours that is being re-released by Trump in both versions. Oh, that would be nice. They put it back into production, yeah. So, hmm. should build on, shouldn't they? <laughs> should do one. Should build on. And uh, Chris is cool. asking about the Zwilling. The Zwilling, yes, the Zwilling. Are you going to review one, Phil? <laughs> we were talking we'll about it. earlier. We said we wouldn't because it's very limited. We can get hold of it. Matt could do a review. He's got it there, look. It's all it's all sealed, so I won't. To be honest, it's an HE111 joined to another HE111, so I can't see what. There's going to yeah. be no difference from the previous kit, so you know yeah, you've only got that centre, centre, section, centre, centre wing with an extra engine on it. So well, I'll tell you what, it's a bloody heavy box. And it's well, you have got two kits in it, theory. Weight, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, basically, but yeah, I'm just saying it's. I don't know. It's a bit niche because John were on about wanting to do one win at mm. one point. So, and this is the other little, little thing where we've got it in. Yup. And, and, and that is, that's got quite a bit of detail on it, look. It is, isn't it? Nice For a little 70 that. second kit. Hmm. So, yes. It's either that or the dragon one. I bet that's a bit easier to build than the dragon one. So, I just want to state as well, because this is just for a review sample. We're not going to be selling this because we can't get fly on trade. If anybody from Fly is watching, yeah, could <laughs> we have a trade account? Well. We'd like to actually stop your kit. Mm. So yeah, that is a funky looking aeroplane. I think that's cool, I do. That, that, the layer so that one is coming down. I'm going to do the review on that one. As a Fly fan, I like me Fly kits. Well, you built the West Six, didn't you? Yeah, that's it. But maybe it's a bit thingy. But there you go. Look, you got a nice big deckle sheet. Glossy on it. Oh my god, you got a paint mask set. Oh look, there you go. Crikey, you've lost that. It now. Hey, you've lost that kit. It's stopping with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm sold. It's got a paint mask set. Happy days. Now I'll send it down with the other <laughs> stuff. But there you go, and then you can do the Pakistan one. Or yeah. the, the Aussie one. Very mm. nice. And then the other version, what was it? Canadian? Yeah, it's Canadian, wasn't it? Yeah, in the um, Southeast Asia camo. Yeah, it's in the camo. And there's another one Asian, but yeah, I'll, I'll put that. So I say, got to be an improvement on the old Airfix one. Hmm, definitely. So, definitely, that'll be definitely. Cool, that. Right, okay, so it's that time okay. where we can talk about this. Nope. Oh. So, <laughs> the Easter egg hunt. There's Ooh. one. This one, that doesn't Do count. Off? <laughs> you can't see this one because you need to click on it. Okay. <laughs> so basically, hidden on the Flory Model store is this egg. If you click on it, it will take you to a secret page. And on oh, there really? is a code. And that will give you 50% off of any order. Okay. You can only use the code once. Okay. And it's limited to five between now and Sunday. And then on Sunday, the egg will be re-hidden somewhere, okay? And then obviously, there'll be another five from Sunday through to whenever they're found. It is somewhere on the site. It's in plain sight. It's just with some text, okay? And it is right there. It's not tiny either. I haven't made it absolutely minute, okay? But it is, it's, well, it's that size, okay? So you can, can find it. It's quite easy. But it is hidden somewhere on the Flory Models main site. So it's in this lot okay so you're gonna to have to click through the pages have a look at things and obviously it's in the area so anybody can see it so it's members non-members it doesn't matter it's somewhere on the flory models site so it could be anywhere on one of the pages when you see it just click on it okay that will give you the code all right and then obviously the first five people to use that code will go through okay so that's how it's actually going to work so don't hang around either because if somebody else is behind you finds the egg and sticks the code in that first five go so have an idea what you want okay get in there and grab it quick because i say when those five are gone the egg will lock and it won't give out the code anymore it won't work anymore after that okay and at that point i will find the code and do it isn't that right mob yes uh and we'll go through it like that that's how it's going to work and as i say sunday the egg will move to somewhere else in the site and there'll be another five <laughs> i do know what time it is thank you i'm getting hinted at by by staff 
but um, so yes that's the thing so you can go off have a look for that one somewhere on the site that's what you're looking for just click on to it takes you to a page on there it says congratulations and all the rest of it and there'll be you know a code that code use it one person please wait <laughs> please don't go around telling people where the code is or anything else like that it's supposed to be a bit of fun and everything else like that all right so obviously if i suddenly find out as a group of you all suddenly seem to have got it together i'll be sniffing a rabbit won't you molly my sniffer dog train sniffer dog here will tell me you're all cheating okay so there we go like that but there you go go off find it it will be available around about 10 minutes after the show all right so it will go because i've got to click it here but i'm a bit worried it might screw up the show so but as soon as we're finished it will go live and active and you can go like that molly wait <laughs> so yes cool very good anything else we need to talk about no i don't think so and we're ready for the round up bit at the end we have got our round up at the end uh me and matt will be live probably some point tomorrow won't we yeah i think we will we're just going to be very very more unscripted than normal i think we'll probably just be modeling and yes. then if nathan's cool. around or andy or ever can just but it won't be i don't think we're gonna have chat on or anything i think we all literally probably do what we do on a skype night and just sit there and chat and there might be a lot of silent bits and the overhead will be on and we'll do a bit of modeling i think so yes we'll see we're just gonna play it by ear for tomorrow so please yeah. can you have a contest for the best box art cool that would be a thing there's plenty of them around <laughs> yeah. that would be a good one actually everyone post up your favorite box art and stuff like that that would be a good one quick one there uh last question from this side uh is uh what's the italary don't bark at me <laughs> what's the italary 148 tomcat like old very very old it's um yeah it's not on par with the modern offers out there like the hobby boss one or anybody else's past that either it is it is what it is it's a, a a nice cheap good kit it's recessed panel lines but it's got nowhere the detail of anything you're likely to find um you know more modern than that so it's a hobby boss will be your next go-to one and then after that you've got um who's it called amk amk as a so i was about to say that just for you think so if you wanted a budget 48 tomcat because give a finger you'd say the hobby boss one yeah would because you can get them pretty cheap can't yeah, you? And yeah. Not do the hobby boss so. one for a budget point i wouldn't really touch the old italiary ones because they are gnarly they're just yeah. lacking in all detail and the surface detail is very soft um yeah. i've built them loads of them to be honest but they're nothing special to be honest if you're doing anything then hobby boss one is your budget one and then you can just work your way up through the others hasagawa after that and then obviously into the tamiya range or the amk range you know yeah. so definitely okay cool no more on the other side great show always thank you for the videos no problem at all chris it's our pleasure as always so what we're going to do i will leave you with your great work for this week as well from the gallery thank you for watching please 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 stay at home stay safe keep in touch with your loved ones as well give them a bell because i've got to phone my mother after this i'll do a skype chat with her make sure she's all right and everything as i say <laughs> me and matt will be on some point tomorrow don't ask us what times we don't know yet just keep an eye out on the old social media things it will be live and all the rest of it but as I said it'll probably be unscripted so you'll just hear us talking rubbish which is normal this is what we've done for three weeks well this is yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, even I less i didn't know than we normal. script if we have a script i don't get sent that then no we don't get the memo on script and everything <laughs> <laughs> right then guys thank you very much for watching it has been a pleasure as always so happy modeling have a great weekend happy easter and everything else like that from me from matt from nathan and everybody at flory models as well thank you for allowing us to do this for the non-members as well you guys are all stars but then you know that anyway right i'm gonna leave it there happy modeling take care bye 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 Yeah.